here are some of the nuts that we're trialing this year. We've been doing this for a number of years now and um, finally stepping it up a bit. Last couple years just making time in the fall to go around to the most important trees that we've found that are bearing, especially in a good mast year like this year, and collecting them and then eating them and seeing you know which are what are the best not only what are the best nuts but what are the healthiest trees and that's an interesting distinction because you can get you know some really great nuts off of trees that are in really rough shape that especially butternuts um, which here is one of those that don't live very well and want to die because of the butternut canker in this part of the world um, and this year is a really good mast year for everything around here, apples, butternuts, oaks, um, and walnuts. And especially exciting is that this U.S. Forest Service a walnut, that's a grafted tree, which is planted, um, we're not sure when, I, I want to research it more, but these are them, um, probably 20 to 25 years ago, um, are bearing this year, and I've passed this for they're probably 30 years old because I've passed it for 10 years uh, that the nut orchard it's been abandoned as far as I can tell and not tended to and a lot of the trees are in rough shape but um it's bearing this year and I happen to be by it a few times at the right time and I've climbed them and shaken them and managed to collect maybe 30 of the nuts um, and have opened three of them to see and they're all labeled according to numbers and they are good walnut they're supposedly a grafted nut, the sign says, um, and they're in a very cold area. Uh, we've got our own walnuts, which have started to bear in the last two years. This year, heavily, uh, after 10 years of planting, they could bear faster if they were in a better spot. I've heard five to seven years easily for walnuts in good locations, even in Vermont. And then we've got some just throughout our neighborhood that I'm testing. And um, I'm going to taste them all. Um, I have already, but I'm going to compare them right now and um, see if there's a real taste difference. Well, primarily what we're looking for is not the size of the whole nut with the husk, because that doesn't really matter. This one in the, we're calling Village Southwest is huge, but we want a big nut itself. But more even importantly than that is we just want really, we want as much nut meat as possible. So we're selecting for the biggest amount of quality nut meat and also how easy it is to get out of the shell um, and um, how abundant the tree is is important healthy the tree there's a lot of other criteria but um, assuming they're all healthy trees that are pretty abundant we're looking for the the most amount of nut meat nut meat I haven't noticed a huge taste between black walnuts locally personally so the taste they're all really good, as far as I can tell. Um, I may be shown wrong on that front at some point, but um, that's what I found so far. This one, for instance, you know, is is a small nut, and here's a really bad one. The nut meat is not a very high proportion. It does come out, well, you know, it doesn't come out that well, actually. We'll see, we'll break these open a little more. Um, this is a, I've done three nuts each, so it's not a huge sample size. I'm going to do some more. We've been eating these for a couple years now, and, you know, these are an Ashworth strain for originally from Elmore Roots, our walnuts, Dean's, and you can see, I mean, look at the proportion of nut meat in that nut. That's really good. So that's a selected variety. It's not grafted, but it's select, selected parentage. Um, and then here is a very exciting butternut we found this year. We're calling it Bear Beach because it's this kind of secret spot we found with a butternut that simply is the healthiest butternut tree I've ever seen in Vermont. It shows no signs of uh, butternut canker and disease and was bearing pretty well, although the bears were picking it up quickly, but I managed to wade through the knotweed and, and collect maybe 30 nuts um, on a beautiful late fall day swimming in the river and this has some pretty decent nut meat but any healthy butternut is a butternut we want to plant around here. I'll show you the master cracker. I've done a video I think on this before but um so people 
have a sense because when you're cracking nuts like this, you need a really good cracker. It's a genius design this guy came up with. You can not only adjust this and this, but you can look at that material coming off of the nuts. It's such an amazing dye plant for dyeing colors, yellow and black. You get incredible leverage, way more than you need. It's called the Masta Cracker. It's out of um, California or Missouri, I think this guy did it. So here's another Dean's Mountain Walnut. We're, we're glad we planted these because they are very high proportion nut meat to shell. Mm. Sorry to eat in the microphone, but they're so good. So I'm going to taste them all and um, we'll report on what we find. And we're making these available. Some of these I'm giving away. Um, most of them, if I have enough, I'll give you them to plant. You have to promise you'll plant them. Sign an oath in blood, but that's cool. That's easy to do. And just plant them. Take care of them. Get a whole bunch of nuts. Free. This is the free lunch in the system. As a nut tree. Apple trees, too, around here. But fat and protein falling from the sky for 100 to 200 years. You don't have to feed it. You don't have to fertilize it. 